So welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is December the 2nd, 2021. We're in December. Jeez, this year has just flew by so fast. And the topic for this evening is you have the power. So this is essentially the wrap up of what we started um, about two episodes ago or two weeks ago. We started talking about a um, Chinese way of doing astrology and also divination, and it's called Qi Men Den Jia. And that system, according to that system, there are 10 guardians. It's, it's called the guardians of um, destiny. And these guardians, um, according to our birthday and our birth time, each one will be assigned one guardian. And our guardian is really a set of energies that's going to assist us while we are alive, while we are playing on earth, because we are really eternal essence embodied. And we are not really orphans being dropped off this planet to um, float or sink on our own. The universe has our back. And that's why there is one guardian being assigned to us who is um, a set of energies that's going to assist us while we are um, playing on earth. So I'm not going to repeat the, the, the 10 guardians, just to just a brief summary of what we talked about in the last two weeks. So apart from the 10 guardians, the 10 guardians, um, so each one has a guardian and the guardian energy, if I may, um, let, let me find a photo that's going to illustrate that. So, so the guardian of destiny, it if you kind of look at our whole body, so the energy of the guardian really is about four inches above our head. So it is not something that is within our physical body. It's the an energy that comes to us through um, a non-physical part of our body called the antenna, which is about four inches above our head. So this celestial, these celestial energies come into our body through this, through the top of our head. And it interacts with a set of energies called the star of destiny. So this set of energies is really about how it, it affects how we think, how our um, logical process is, how we think, all of that, what, what thoughts goes through our mind. So that is really uh, the star of destiny. So each one from birth, according to what our birthday is, will be assigned initially one star of destiny. And so there are nine stars altogether. So one, one, each person will have one by default being assigned. And as the energy goes in, it affects our thinking. And then it starts to also go in to a different part of our body, which is our heart area. And it affects our emotions and also affects what motivates us. So that is really how the guardian, the star works down or its way down. The energy works its way down to the door of destiny. The door of destiny is, is really our heart area. It hits our heart area and that is what motivates us, the emotions. What emotions motivates us to do things, taking action. And because we take action, then the stem of destiny is another set of energies, which is in our sacral area. And it is the results because as we think, we are motivated and then we take action and the action will get us result. And this result 
also kind of set up a feedback loop, which is, um, I think, yes. So this is, this is another diagram kind of shows how the <clears throat> home energy, which is where our guardian is, because the guardian energy is really from the um, sector of the, the, the universe that we call our home where our soul energy is coming from. It goes to affect our mind, our thoughts. It motivates us to take action and then it gives us results and create our reality. And then this reality in terms, in turn would um, affect our motivation, our emotion and how we, we evaluate and think. So it, it it's a feedback loop where the celestial energies works within us. So that's what we talked about in the last two weeks. I talked about all the different kinds of um, guardian energies and also the, 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 the star doors and stem and how all those kind of fit together. And um, and then we also talked about that the guardian energy is something that is beyond us because it does not come into our body. It, it's not be something that we generate ourselves. It's something that comes to us. So we have no control over it. We cannot change our guardian. However, the others, because those energy, the star energy, the door energy, and the stem energy, those are things that are energies that's running within us. And so we can, we have the power to change it. And last week, I also talked about how to change these. And the way to change it is if we want to change the star. So if we want to change our star energy, let's say if, if our star happened to be, um, let's say, a destructor, something that is um, not as easy to work with. So if you, if you want to change it to something that is um, easier to work with, let's say to work with um, something like the heart, or bird, those are different stars. If you want to change it, then <clears throat> because star energy works with our guardians. So the process to change it is that you have to connect and activate your guardian first, and then you figure out which star you want to change into. And then you just say the, the new star. So the, the star, let's say, instead of Destructor, you want to change it to um, heart. So heart, activate. And after you activate the new star, then you want to check whether it is aligned with, the, with your guardian energy because the guardian works with the star energy. So you have to say star and guardian connect and activate. And then you see whether when the star and the guardian energy are connected, see if the whole energy kind of flows by activating your Kundalini. And when you activate a Kundalini and the Kundalini is able to run all the way from the, the root chakra all the way up to your crown chakra, then you know that, okay, the star and the guardians must, the, those energy work well together because otherwise the energy won't be able to flow through. There's a disconnect when the energy does not flow through. So if there is a disconnect, what can you do? You, what you can do is actually um, run ultimate power to, to really find out what it is that's so that the ultimate power would be able to um, just dissolve anything that is blocking this energy. 
and see if the ultimate power would be able to assist you in making the guardian and the star work together. So hopefully this, the ultimate power would be able to do that. If not, then, then, then you really have to pick another star that can actually work well with your guardian because you can't change your guardian. And if you want to, let's say, change your door or the stem, you don't have to because it's, these are internal energies. So you actually, if you just want to change your door, then you don't have to change. You don't have to activate your guardian first. It's not a requirement. So if you want to change your door, then you simply have to um, pick the door that you want. Let's say that your door is something that is hard. Let's say it is harm which is not easy to work with and you want to change it to something like open, which is um, a much easier energy to work with. Then let's say that this one here, what you would say is door activate. And because you still have to make sure that this new door is going to work and align with the rest of your the other two filters. So you would still want to connect open with whatever your star is, connect and then activate them and then run Kundalini to see whether those two work together. And you also want to, next one is to check whether the door, the star and the stem connect and activate and then run Kundalini again to make sure that all of those three filters that are within your own body work well together. And so this is really what the, the last um, couple of points is, is talking about is if you want to change the stem, then just connect all of those, activate, and then make sure Kundalini can run and if not, then activate the ultimate power to see if ultimate power would be able to assist you in aligning those energies. So that's all we talked about for the last two weeks. So then that brings us to this week. So what is this week about? This week is really to bring everything together. So now that we know who, who our guardian is, we know also how to connect with not just our own guardian, but connect with all 10 of the guardians so that we can um, ask them for assistance. And we also learned how to change the filters. So the next thing then would be you known how do we ask all of these energy to work for us, to give us um, what it is that we desire to, to assist us in achieving our goals? So there are two processes that I would um, go over in this evening that is going to assist you in using all of these energies to make sure that the energy can work on your behalf. So process A, there's a process B as well. I just want to mention that the process A is for people that are not um, very good at visualizing. So for somebody that is more logical mind and they have trouble visualizing, then process A would be the one to use. For people that are really more artistic and they really are visual and they're good in visualizing, then process B probably is something that they prefer because they, they, they are really better at, those creative people are really better at visualizing then this would be a better, um, would be easier process for them. But for the rest of us, process A. So I'm going to go over process A first. 
And then I can, I will go over the process B. So process A, because we are really um, commanding the energy to do work for us. So we have to, the first thing is get into wholeness. Why do we need to get into wholeness? It's because when we are in wholeness, our we are really our mind is really out of our body because when we are in our everyday um, consciousness, in our everyday frame of mind, there are so many thoughts in our minds that it actually confuses the 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 guardians because we are going to ask the guardian to more specifically chief to assist us in um, achieving our goals. So when there are so many thoughts in our mind, it really, it, it interferes with the process. That's why wholeness, when we're in wholeness, we are in a much more calm and um, our mind is much more focused, calm, and free of interference. And also, this is the best, this is really when we're in wholeness is the best way to ask the energy, all of the celestial and physical energies to work together to give us what it is that we want to achieve and experience. So that's why the first step is to get ourselves into a wholeness frame of mind which really means that our mind is beyond the body so that we are not um so that we can be in a calm and quiet state of mind and when you're in that state of mind then connect with your guardian whomever your guardian is you want to connect with your guardian first because your guardian is really like your your you know, grandmother and grandfather that is going to, even though the the your guardian may not be the one, let's say if my, um, for for my um, take an example myself my guardian is the tortoise, so my guardian. Even though it's powerful guardian, but it does not, it's not the chief, because the chief really is the chief of all the guardians. So it it's really the chief is the best guardian to make sure that you get the goal that you want. However, before you connect with the chief, connect with your own guardian so that your guardian, your own guardian can be there kind of at the, the, the um, holding space for the rest of these steps. So connect with your guardian. And the next is to connect with all 10 guardians. even though we are going to connect with the chief to grant us our wish. However, even the chief has to connect with some of the other guardians because each guardian has their own strength and some goals may need the cooperation of a few guardians. So if you are already connected with all 10 guardians, it really facilitate the whole process. So that's why the third step is to connect with all 10 guardians. And um, the first time you do this process, getting into wholeness, connecting to the guardian or you know, connecting to all 10 guardians, it may take a while. However, there is a shortcut is um, after I'm, I, I go through all this material, I'm going to take everybody into just the, the meditation for tonight is really to take all, you all through this process. 
so then when I get to, when I bring everybody into wholeness and all, when you feel yourself really in a calm state of mind and you really can focus when you're in wholeness, then all you have to do is, because you're already in wholeness, all you have to do is just give that feeling of being in wholeness a name. Because if once you have a name, name the process, you can name it wholeness, you can name it whatever name you want. So once you name that, it actually, um, the next time you want to get into wholeness again, all you have to do is just invoke the name and your body already knows, oh, she or he or she wants to be in, feel like that again. So once you've done it once and you give the process a name, the next time you don't have to go through, let's say the 10, 15 minutes of um, meditation just to get into wholeness. All you have to do is to just invoke the name of that process and your body will know how to get you into that state again. Same thing for connecting with your guardian. Because once you give the name to um, being connected to your guardian, once you have that, it's so much easier if you just use the name to invoke that feeling. And the same with the 10 guardians as well. So that really is the shortcut to really bear in mind when we do the meditation later on is to make use of this shortcut. And the next thing, number four, step, step number four is, is VMPFC activate. So what is this? The, the, the VMPFC is really a, um, a point in your prefrontal cortex in your brain. So that part of your brain can is really to assist you in controlling your emotions so that you're in a calm state. So when you activate that, and also when you deactivate 7.1, which means that your amygdala is deactivated, your left amygdala is deactivated. So when you deactivate the, the, the left amygdala, you are not, um, it's much easier for you to stay in calm, in a calmness. So you won't get triggered. No matter <clears throat> what communication you, you get. So that's what the, these next two steps are, is really to maintain you in a um, stable emotional state. And then the next thing is really to activate the chief connection. So chief connect, activate. And then once you have that, once you are connected to your chief, then ask for, ask chief for what you want. So ask the chief, so chief, I command you to blah, blah, blah. So whatever your wish is, this is when you actually state to the chief, you tell the chief what it is that you want. And I'll say more about um, how to phrase our command a little later on. But for now, just know that this is the placeholder for when we actually give our command to the chief. And once you, you um, gave your command to the chief, then you listen for response. Some people are, um, they have, their intuition is really high and they can actually carry, they can hear communication from chief or from their own um, guardian. So for those people, if you can hear a response, then that will be great. Then you can really hear whether the response is yes or no or something else. So for those who are not as intuitive, they can't, they're not at the state where they can hear 
communications from their from the guardians, then there is an alternative is that you wait for three markers. So you look for three markers. So example of three markers. Let's say I asked the chief for, um, <clears throat> uh, let's say for a million dollars because I want to um, buy a piece of land so that I can create a conscious community and so that I can start to um, you know, contribute more to the consciousness of, of humanity. Let's say that is my, my goal. Then what are the three markers? So the first marker would be all of a sudden, I have somebody send me an email to ask me to join a consciousness community, for example, that would be the first one, first marker. And then the second one, maybe a friend of mine or all of a sudden tells me, hey, um, Winnie, would you like to come with us? The group of us is going to go look for a piece of land to buy so that we can all you know, come together and live together to form a conscious this, um, community. Like that would be a second marker. And then the third marker could be, um, you know, all of a sudden when you open your, your Facebook or whatever social media you check, you see this um, lots of people posting like community, conscious community, conscious community. So all of a sudden when you see all of these, it's, it's like synchronicity. So you're looking for three things that is really um, reinforce to you that the universe hurt your, really hurt your um, request. And they are giving you these clues, these markers to let you know that yes, it's a go. So that is the process. So that is process A. And so I just want to see, did I miss anything? No, I think I've, I've um, talked about all of that. So I'm just gonna go briefly go over process B because process B is really very similar to process A. The, like the first, um, so wholeness, connect to guardian, 10 guardians, VM, PFC 7.1. So all the first five steps are all the same. So it's really uh, starting from the sixth step is to connect with the heaven, connect with the guardian, the heaven guardian. So this heaven guardian is really um, the guardian that is specifically good at visualization. So for those who are good at visualization, when you are connected with the heaven, with heaven guardian, so heaven guardian activate, when you activate that, it actually can enhance your ability to visualize. So you can actually visualize what it is that you want. So, so just to continue the, my example from before is if I'm really good at, at uh, visualization, I go for a process B, I connect with all of these and then I connect with heaven guardian and then I start to visualize what the that um, community that consciousness community looks like I would start to really visualize oh I want the um, let's say the this community to have um, let's say I wanted to have 10 houses on that property 10 main houses and they have to be uh, uh, arranged in a way that is um, uh, consistent with sacred geometry. And I want to plant, let's say I want to plant things like saw seeds plants with um, trees that have saw seeds, which is going to, to make the, that land become more, um, higher in vibration. So all of these, so I start to visualize and really see planting the trees, building those 
um, 10 different main buildings and placing them in a grid that is consistent with sacred geometry. And I visualize the kind of people that I want to join that community. And I, I actually visualize that we are self-sufficient. We're going to have um, like grow our own vegetables, all, all of those things. So I will visualize everything that I want in this goal of mine. And when I'm really happy with my visualization and I really feel that, okay, this is it. This is the, the vision that I want. This is what I want. And it is, um, and have this feeling, this really good feeling that because of all the support of the environment and all the incoming energies that you have the feeling that, yes, this is definitely a success. When you have that, when you have that visualization, then you connect with the chief and then you ask chief. You ask chief to assist you in anchoring that vision, that's the vision that you want. And after that, you just listen for the response or you wait for the three markers. So that's process B. So now let's go over some fine prints. <laughs> fine prints about the command. <clears throat> First thing is that the, you have to make sure that your goal is clear, that you yourself actually know what you want. And clarity of your command. So you actually have a clear idea of what you want, what your goal is. So I asked for a million dollars. So that's a very clear command. But if you say something like, I want the uh, chief to give me more money so I can buy the piece of land, blah, 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 all that. But how much is more money? Who knows? 50 cents, maybe $100,000 is, you know, is more money. But $100,000 may not be able to buy you a very nice piece of land, may not even be able to buy you, um, like, provide for the 10 buildings and all that. So have the clarity of what it is that you actually want to achieve so that the more details you know, the more clarity it is and the easier it is for the chief to give you what you want because the chief it does not really... Um, cannot really read your mind. So when you communicate with the chief, make sure that you actually know what you want. So clarity, clarity of your command, very important. Second thing is the law of nature is law, so equivalence. So you don't just say, I'm gonna you know, go and, and get, ask for a million dollars for me to you know, buy land and all that, you have to give back as well. It's not just give me, give me, give me. So this give me, give me mentality is not very um, attractive for the universe. When you ask for something, also be prepared to give something in return. So this is what the, the law of equivalence really is is that when you ask for something, be prepared to give something in return. So in the, the, the example I was working from before is, so let's say I ask for this million dollars so that I can <clears throat> create a community. And, and so what it is that I want to give back is I would give back is, I would volunteer to learn 
how to um, make sure that I create that piece of land to be a high vibration, like planting source seeds, all of that. And also to find the right people to come here and also work really diligently, work on managing this community and making sure that everything runs smoothly in this community so that it's a community that is really set up to raise people's consciousness not just a community where you know the the people there are just going to fight each other so it is really so what is my job what what do I want to give in return is I'm going to work hard to make sure that this community is really something that's going to support the consciousness of the people that's in it and also to raise the consciousness of the human collective as well. So that would be an equivalent. Something about the, the, the law of equivalence is, let's say you ask for a million dollars. So, um, but what, what are you giving back? You have to give back something that is equivalent to the million dollars, maybe not dollar by dollar. I think um, the, the rule of thumb is at least 30% of what you're asking for. So that is, um, so you can't just say, I, 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 I ask for a million dollars and in return, I'll give a thousand dollars to charity. A thousand dollars to a million dollars, that's not, that's nowhere near equivalent. So if you use the 30% the rule, then at least give 300,000 to charity. So like approximately one third. So that is, that is kind of the guideline. However, it's, it really, um, however, if it's something like um, in my cases, I'm going to be, to, to do whatever it is that I can to consciously make sure that everyone that is in this community is going to, be able to raise their consciousness so that is isn't a the what i give back is something that is non um non-monetary so make sure that it is something in your if like when you are in your peace of mind that this is in your mind you actually believe that this is the equivalence So that is what I want to talk about in the law of equivalence. So next is really a suggestion on the format of how you want to, to request. So a suggestive format is, Chief, I command you to let me buy a piece of land so that I can um, create a consciousness community and I would do the best I can to, to manage and learn how to manage this community so that everyone who lives on this piece of land in this community would have their consciousness raised and also to conduct meditations and um work with other communities to raise the consciousness of the whole human collective. So that really is a, an example that I just made up that follows this format. I command, Chief, I command you to let me have you know, my goal and in return, I would do dot, dot, dot. So that is the format of the command. And the next few things to, to talk about is that um, 
for those of you who can actually hear communication from your from the chief or even from your own guardians the suggestion is don't ask for a yes or no answer let's say if the if the if if i said this command and i heard the chief said okay this is a great um go so i'm going to grant this so then my next communication may be asked so what is the next step that i need to do in order to have this goal so don't ask for don't is to phrase your question so that it's not just a yes or no. Like for example, if another example is, let's say if the, the chief said no, um, the yeah, your, we're not gonna grant your wish. <clears throat> then maybe what I can ask is why, instead of asking why not, is to actually ask, so, what is it um, that I needed to do in order to, how can I modify my command so that it is acceptable to the universe? Maybe, so then that would be a, um, a question. So when the chief comes back, the chief may be, humanity is not ready right now, but wait a year. Maybe that is really what the, ch the, the chief may ask you to do is, you know, come back in a year's time when the collective um, consciousness is higher, then this would be the right time to create that community. Something like that. <clears throat> so instead of yes or no answer is to actually ask more information as open-ended kind of questions when you're communicating with the with your guardian or with the chief or whomever it is that you are talking to so this is really a note about talking to your guardian the next one is is to talk about um <clears throat> aligning your energies so depending on what it is that what goal it is that you want to ask for you have to also align the the star the door and the stem and the, and which guardian that you talk to as well so example and let's say um Okay, so this is really an example that Sifu James gave us is, if you want to ask for longevity, you can go to the guardian. So the guardian would be the chief. So star, so star, what's the best star for longevity? It's really hot, best star, best door for longevity is life and the best stem for longevity is chia so some of the the doors some of the stars and some of the stems their energy is really not destructive for example if your star is destructor your door is harm and your stem is gui that is completely um a different set of energies if you have that set of energies and you're asking for longevity it's not as easy to to have that goal because your internal energy is really does not support you don't even support you to have that goal so before you ask for something like longevity, really look at how your own internal energy is 
aligned first. Someone who has destructor as the star, harm as the door, and gui as the stem is somebody who is much more aggressive and um, a go-getter. And those people are probably not um, uh, likely to live to have you know long life. You really need to change if longevity is what you're going after, then you seriously need to rethink and change your star, door, or stem to make sure that your internal energy really supports your goal. So, so this is this is really for longevity. And if you I, I actually do know somebody who, who has um, destructor the star as a uh, destructor as the star and harm stem and gui, uh, I mean, harm door and gui stem. I'm not going to name name, but um, so, however, you know, this, so this really needs to. You really need to look at your internal energy and shift it. And luckily, we are, it's really within our own power to sh change the star, the door, and the stamps, all three of them. We can sh shift all three of them. Maybe not all of them at once. Maybe you want to just shift the star first and then see how you adjust to it. Because if somebody is, is used to, you know, um, being aggressive, always argumentative, then it's you really need to do the make one change to quiet to really um, step by step to shift the internal energies. I would really not suggest to change all three at once because that would be a lot of changes. You really have to go through um, a lot of internal shifts in order to integrate all three being changed at the same time. So suggestion is always to change one. And then when you really feel that that is, when you notice some changes and you start to feel that change, then change the next one. And then after you change the next one, make sure that all the, the all three of the energy still work together. And then after a while, change the third one so that you don't just jump from, you know, being the, being the, the you know, aggressive um, footballer. All of a sudden you get to somebody who is kind of more, um, if not scholarly or, 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 or passive, at least somebody who is, you know, not as aggressive as before, that being this um, internal change of energy to support longevity. So these are some suggestions that um, Sifu James has gave us is for longevity, this is the combination of external and internal energies that's going to support having this goal. And for good health is really chief is you can get it from chief, but they are also oh, okay, probably ch um, chief is the best one for getting your goal. And then you star. So heavenly heart is actually a good one as well. And then the door could be either life or rest. And then the stem, the stem could be a few things as long as it is a positive stem. Um, I believe there are five positive stem and five that are um, not as positive. So the suggestion is Jia and Yi, those are the good ones for health and also some of the other positive ones is really Yi, uh, Bing and Ding. So all those are really good ones for health for if you want to have good health. 
and then the next one the next set is really for wealth so for wealth what are the combination combination um, so you can get it from chief but earth and heaven are also suitable for wealth and the star is heart or ambassador door is life stem is either jia or wu would be good for for wealth and prosperity the difference between wealth and prosperity prosperity is you have everything you you have enough of everything whereas wealth is you want to be um somebody that has lots of money so so you really want to accumulate to wealth whereas prosperity you want to have enough of everything you want to not just not to have you know the the biggest house in on the block you want to live in a decent sized house you want to have always have you know good food on the table you want to have you know good relationship all of those so that's prosperity so these are the combinations so chief is good besides chief you can go for harmony or earth would also be suitable guardians to grant your wish and then the star is heart ambassador or grain so those are for prosperity and then door is life or open and then stem is jia jia is really the best however alternatively the other positive stems would be good as well so these are the combinations suggested for health and wealth and like most of the time like these two are really the 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 most commonly asked for combinations so now i've gone through all the fine prints i've gone through two processes to ask the um to command the energy to do work and so that really concludes all that i want to talk about this evening and with all of these different thing um things that you can do you actually can start to command the universe to bring about what it is that you want to experience and you can start to shift everything your own internal energy as well so that really puts the power in your hands so and this this is really how to the make use of all these energies to assist you in having the the life that you love to experience so thank you very much for listening to this